सितारे जिसकी गर्दे राह हो वो कारवा तू है बसमीम् असल वरम वर्क आई होप ऑल ऑफ़ यू आर इन द बेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ मैन एंड हेल्थ टुडे वी गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ यूनिट टू व्हिच इज़ पिप मीट्स अ कॉन्वेक्ट ओके पिप इज़ द नेम ऑफ दिस बॉय राइट हेयर एंड वी गोइंग टू रीड अबाउट द टाइम पिप मीट्स अ कॉन्वेट कॉन्वेक्ट अ कॉन्वेक्ट इज अ प्रिजनर Okay, a convict is another word for the word prisoner. I'll start reading now. My father's family name is Pirip, and my first name is Philip. But as a child, I couldn't say either, so I called myself Pip, and then so did everyone else. So both the names were difficult to pronounce for Pip as a child so he called himself Pip and that is what his name became permanently even when he grew up I say that my name is Pirip because that's what is written on my father's tombstone and that and it is what my sister told me My sister is married to the blacksmith We lived in a marshy area down by the river a few miles from the sea One day I stood in the churchyard and looked over my parents' tombstone at the dark flat wilderness beyond the churchyard. The marshes were crisscrossed with ditches and mounds. So he's describing the place where he lives. Okay, he lives in a marshy area. A uh, marshy is a uh, a piece of land uh, an area that is filled with a lot of water and different plants growing on the water okay and churchyard is the place where there are graves of people uh, it it's a place it's an area of a grave surrounding the church okay and he is uh, telling about the time he was he visited his parents graves and over there the marshes they were crisscrossed which means that the ditches and mounds they were spread all over the marshes okay in the distance i could see the gray line of the river and then far away the sea it was a cold day the gray land and the gray sky make me feel made me feel sad i suddenly realized that i was an orphan and i began to cry so the atmosphere atmosphere was also sad and he also remember that he had no parents so he started crying Hold your noise cried a terrible voice it came from a man who had just stepped out from behind a gravestone keep still or i'll cut your throat so this man this man over here the convict the prisoner he threatened pip okay this man was frightening he was dressed in rough gray clothes and he had a big iron chain on his leg he was an escaped convict so that man that prisoner had escaped from the prison okay his shoes were broken and he had an old rag tied around his head he was dirty from being soaked in the muddy water from the ditches so he must have traveled from the ditches of while after he escaped so he was his clothes were all wet from that water okay he was covered in scratches from nettles and stones he limped and shivered and glared and growled so he did all these four things at the same time he limped which means that he uh, was a little unbalanced maybe because he was, his foot was hurt or something he shivered because he was might be cold he glared which means he stared angrily at pip and he growled which means that he made threatening sounds his teeth chattered in his head as he seized me by the chin oh don't cut my throat sir i pleaded in terror so pip was of course afraid and he begged him not to cut his throat tell me your name said the man quick pip sir once more said the man staring at me louder pip pip sir so you can see that pip is very scared of this man Show me where you live," said the man. "Point out the place." I pointed to where our village lay, a mile from the church. 
The man looked at me closely, then he turned me upside down and emptied my pockets. There was nothing in them but a piece of bread. The upside down view of the church righted itself and he placed me on a high tombstone. I sat trembling while he ate the bread ravenously. Ravenously means hungrily. So clearly the prisoner was very hungry. He had, he had not eaten any food. Now look here, said the man. Where are your parents? There, sir, said I. The man jumped and made a short run, but then he stopped and looked over his shoulder. There, sir, I said, I timidly said, pointing to the tombstone. There, sir, I timidly said, pointing to the tombstone. Oh, said the man, so who do you live with? If I let you live, which I haven't made up my mind about. So the man, first he was about to run, scared because he thought that Pip's parents were around. But when he realized that he was pointing to the tombstones, he came back and he asked Pip that, Who do you live with? My sister, sir, Mrs. Joe Gargery, wife of Joe Gargery, the blacksmith, sir. Blacksmith, huh? said he, and looked down at his leg. So, uh, Pip, lives, uh, Pip lives with his sister, uh, who uh, whose husband is a blacksmith. Okay, blacksmith is somebody who works with tools and... A blacksmith is a person that uh, who makes things out using tools out of metal. Okay, a blacksmith makes things out of metal. Blacksmith, huh? said he, and looked down at his leg. After looking at his leg and me several times, he took me by both arms and tilted me back as far as he could hold me. Then he stared into my eyes. So this was a manner of threatening Pip, okay? And why did he look down at his legs? Because he had a chain in his legs and he needed something to break this chain. And where could he get that thing from? Of course, from a blacksmith. Now look here, he said. I need to decide if I will let you live. Do you know what a file is? Yes, sir. And you know what grub is? Yes, sir. So a file is a hard tool that is used for cutting metal. And a grub is a slang word for food. Grub, a slang basically means that a kind of informal language that is used by people when they're talking to somebody informally. Okay? So grub is the informal word for food. After each question, he tilted me over a little more. This made me feel helpless. I was in danger. So he was tilting Pilp over in order to threaten him. You get me a file, he tilted me again. And you get me a grub, he tilted me again. You bring them both to me, he tilted me again. Or I'll have your heart and liver out, he tilted me again. So that is a very uh, angry threat, very dangerous threat. I was dreadfully frightened and hoped that he would not drop me. I clung to him with both hands. He dipped me backwards and rolled me around so that the church seemed to jump over its own weathercock. Then still holding me up on the tombstone, he went on. So he did all that to make Pip feel more scared and more threatened. Okay. Then still holding me up on the tombstone, he went on. Early tomorrow morning, bring that file and the grub. You bring the lot to me, add the old battery over there. If you do it and you don't say a word about me, I will let you live. Battery is a place, a cage where they keep animals, okay, where they keep livestock. It's not the battery you put in toys and that kind of thing. Okay, so if, if you fail or say anything at all about me, then your heart and your liver shall be torn out roasted and eaten now i'm not alone there's a young man hiding with me in comparison with him i am an angel so he threatened pip again and this time he said that there's another person hiding with me and that person is worse than me that young man can hear us now 
that young man has a secret way of getting at a boy and at his heart and at his liver a boy can hide himself from that young man a boy may lock his door may be warm in bed may tuck himself up may draw the clothes over his head may think himself comfortable and safe but that young man will softly creep and creep his way to him and tear him open so he is threatening pip that the, that man the other person that's hiding with me is even more dangerous than me and he'll find you no matter where you hide i'm keeping the young man from harming you at the present moment with great difficulty i find it very hard to hold that young man off of your inside now what do you say i was so frightened but i said that i would get him the file and i would get him what broken bits of food i could and i would come to him at the battery early in the morning so of course pip was very scared so he agreed to what that man told him promise on your life said the man i promised and he took me down from the top of the tombstone now he went on remember that promise and remember that young man and get home good good night i stammered good good night sir i stammered stammered means when you speak like this the way it's written over here hesitantly and uh, trembling because you're too scared okay it is going to be a long night for me said he he looked at the cold wet flat marsh i wish i was a frog or an eel so it was also going to be a difficult night for that prisoner because one thing his legs were tired the second thing is it was a cold day and he wished that he was not human he was something else so life would be easier for him he hugged his shuddering body in both his arms as if to hold himself together and limped towards low church wall he got over it slowly like a man whose legs were numbed and stiff and then turned around to look for me when i saw him turning i was frightened again and ran home without stopping okay so after threatening him the prisoner went over the church wall and one last time he looked back at pip and pip was so frightened by him that that he ran away home without even stopping and looking back that was all for today thank you very much all of you stay blessed allah hafiz